So I made this model in Wings 3D and it's lit in Bryce under a default lighting setup. If you want to make the model then I've got a little video here, you can find that on my YouTube channel, it was the last video I made. Uh, but as things stand what I'm looking at is to create a special effect lighting that renders within a reasonable time and also to utilize some of the options in the image based lighting lab to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the sky lab so select sky and fog and go into the sky lab and I'm going to start with the sun and moon settings. I don't want the sun and moon as a visible object I do want 100% shadow intensity. For cloud cover I don't want the clouds. For atmosphere what I'm going to do is use the haze as an effect. I'm going to turn the fog off and set the haze down to a fairly low level. You can use this control here, render against a neutral background so you can get an idea of what's going off in the sky. And you can see at the moment the sky is a rich blue colour and the haze line is very weak. But I can use colour perspective here and by setting these you can create quite a strong band of uh, light across the horizon. So what I want to do is have a fairly thin bright band and I want it against a uniform black background. So to achieve that effect I'm just going to go out of here, modify the sky settings to custom sky and then set these three swatches to fully black. And that will have the effect when I go back into the sky lab of turning the sky black and ensuring there's no other light pollution in this. And then finally image based lighting, use HDRI image and then generate a HDR image from this sky. So just set the default setting and you can see now this is our HDRI image. And I'm going to then export this as a spherical map which will tend to look like that when it's done. So export image, I'm going to use uh, this option of uh, spherical mapping. So that's down here instead of light probe, spherical. And just save that. And then if I bring this back up so you can see it, that's what it looks like, that's the spherical map. If I'd have uh, rotated the HDRI image then that would have turned out a sort of sinusoidal so I left it reset there. Now go to render in scene. You see it's quite dark because by using the HDRI image and setting the HDRI from the sky then that's turned the sun off automatically. It's default quality setting I'm going to leave the same so I'm going to use HDRI lighting. I don't need any specular output I'm going to increase the effect so we can start seeing something in the scene. Now as things stand, because this HDI was generated from the haze and that was right along the horizon, all the light is arriving from the horizon so I need to rotate this round a bit to get light from a different direction. So I'll just rotate it round a bit like so and increase the light output. So I'm, I'm running out of room here so what I can do is apply to light source with the intensity and increase the intensity a bit and then that will allow me to scale the output and do that uh, after I've done the exporting. So if I check out of here now and give this a quick render you can see I've got fairly good shadows here. You can see a little bit of banding but if I want to get rid of that then I can, uh, I can just increase the quality setting. This light band in the distance is the haze that uh, is causing that effect. I could go atmosphere off set the sky to fully black and that would get rid of that band and there'd be no light pollution from that. So this is a little bit bright, too br brightly lit at the moment for what I've got in mind so I'm going to go back in here and reduce the intensity of the light output somewhat, check out, render. Now the next thing I'm going to introduce is a volumetric material and I'm going to place it on this far corner. So I'm going to create a default bright sphere and modify the material, change it from surface to volume by clicking on this control there and I want it to be basic shading with no shadow casting. So if I do that then it will render quite efficiently. I'll make it a sort of purpley colour so it's in keeping with what I've already got. Make it fuzzy, make the edges very soft and then reduce the density. So now I've got a sort of purple blob. And I'm going to check out of here now and expand that sphere and load it up over the back corner of that cube. There we go. So now it's sort of fogging the back corner of that cube. But the thing about this is it will be able to receive lighting effects. So one of the reasons this is lit is because the HDRI lighting is lighting it. And I'm going to start putting another light source in here and that's going to light the inside of this 
uh, volumetric material. So I'm going to create a radial light and edit that radial light and give it a gel. So use gel. Go into procedural to edit the gel. Click in the diffuse blob. Switch to image texture. Go into the editor and load in my exported HGRI spherical map. So that's just a, a bright line that's got a magenta edge. Check out of that. Change the mapping mode here to random. And then I can control the frequency of this random line through the transformation tools. So I'll take that up a bit. I don't know. Experiment, say, 8% there. So that will now be sort of random squiggly line. I can check out of there. I'll do a render in scene. can't see very much at the moment because it's lost inside the shape. If I turn off shadow casting, then uh, that will increase its efficiency. And then I'm also going to increase the diffuse output. So you can see now a bit of the effect of that. Switch it to squared fall off so it controls its area. Get rid of the specular app because I don't need any and increase the efficiency. And then finally I'm going to exclude the plane so it, it only casts light on the volumetric sphere and the object. So at this point I'll lift this light source up and try and position it towards the back corner of this cube and you can see the effect of that now. So it's created a sort of squiggly plasmary line within the material and that will also be falling across the object surface. So if I can get this in the right place I can get some lighting on the top of this object but uh, it's also falling into the volumetric material. If that's rendering a bit on the slow side and go into the volume material, modify the material and reduce the quality setting and it'll render a bit faster but at some point you do start to see bands in the material but there you go that's speeded the render time up a bit. So the next thing is I want to scatter this plasma effect around so I select my radial light, press Control C and Control V and just keep pressing Control V until it starts to look and get quite bright in this nano preview. So I've produced quite a few radial lights there, 11 by the looks of it. So I now select all radial lights, oh that's creating one, I need the selection tool that's down here. There you go, that's all radial lights selected. Go to edit and then from the random control, so on that blob there, select 3D Disperse Rotate and then just nudge it very slightly so that they are disrupted and that will create lots of slightly out of uh, sync random lines and how out of sync you want them will depend on how far you push that control out so eventually it will just turn into chaos so the idea there is that we're getting these lines scattered around over the object and through this volume material and it's just a lighting effect so we've got the effect of that traveling through the material and landing on the object which is what I was aiming for right the next thing to consider if I go back to the material is it's receiving this light so if I hold the alt key down and click on the color swatch I can make it more receptive to different colors so by give, making it sure it's got a bit of a red green and blue in this it'll be able to receive white so that'll lighten it up but it also means it'll receive more light from my effect so maybe it's got a bit too bright there then I can modify the uh, the density of the material down so it doesn't look too bright and then it's a matter of looking where the effect is mostly lift the camera up and uh, narrow the field of view lift the camera up so slide it back and narrow the field of view so I can see the top side of this effect on the lower side of this cube and then I for final rendering choose higher settings for the volumetric material if it needs it or for the uh, for the HDRI lighting to, to create this effect. Now really I'd like this to be uh, slightly uh, brighter in the in the, the volume cloud so I'm just going to modify that by lowering the density increasing the sensitivity to green see if I can pick up more of a white highlight in there and then we'll give that another render so yes you can see uh, it's the the fogging effects been quite reduced now possibly a bit too much there so it's just a bit of balancing for the final phase I'll take it back up 35 so it's got more of a glow uh, too high so take it down to say I'll type 30 in might be the best bet to type figures in when you need to make small adjustments so there you go I would say that's uh, that's more or less there the render times 
I don't know, one and a half minutes. It'll take a little bit longer on the anti-alias pass, so I'll let that complete and then uh, that will be the final render. So, there you go, a fairly convoluted way to create this sort of effect, but it does utilise a lot of different components within Bryce, which is why I thought it might be an interesting uh, thing to explore so you can uh, familiarize yourself with volumetric materials, the radial lights and gels exporting from the image based lighting lab so there's a lot of things going on and it has this quite nice effect that it looks like the lights sort of pouring into these hollows and and coming out again in fact I might focus more on that element of it now I'll do it by narrowing the field of view and bringing the camera down so it's cutting out the top of that and then I can enlarge the volume sphere a little bit more so it'll capture more effect but uh, thanks to the exclusion options, probably that's, I don't know why that's a bit much, it's, it's sort of clipping into the ground there, you can see there's a problem when the it clips the ground, so you can do things like squash the volume sphere to change its proportions and, and avoid these clipping issues, so that's, uh, that's another thing you could do there, and if you want to, if you want to make it more sensitive, the lighting effect. You're aiming in, in, in any of these images to have a good range in contrast. You don't want to, you don't want to have missed out on, on full blackness and, or full whiteness, otherwise you're not utilizing the full range of the monitor's ability to display the image. So if you don't get that, you could always try and correct that in a paint package, but generally that means you've actually lost information somewhere, so it's better to try and do it at the initial rendering. Uh, well, that's my idea anyway. You don't have to agree with it. So, I don't think that looks too bad, so I'll let that render out and that can be the final image. Okay then, that's the end of the video, hope you found that interesting and uh, you'll experiment with these effects in your own renders.